the day begin Silently closing their bedroom door Leaving the note that she hoped would say more She goes downstairs to the kitchen Clutching a handkerchief With a pains of internal death Thou knowest, Lord, the secrets of our hearts. Shut not thy merciful ears to our prayers. Stepping outside, she is free. She. We gave her most of our lives. Is leaving. Sacrificed most of our lives. We gave her everything money could buy. She's Listen. Hello, Sarge. We've got him. Greengrass. He was seen forcing an entry in Braithwaite's barn. These aren't digestive. What's that? These aren't digestive. Just get over there, will you? Yes, Sergeant. Now, Rowan, now. Now, Sergeant. This is the room, Mr. Miller. It gets the sun in the morning. And the moon at night. I'm sorry. It's an old song. Oh, of course. It was new this year. Well, I think this will do me very well, Mrs. Tripp. It was my husband's room. Years ago, he used to like to sit in here and sketch. 
He was a teacher. He died of cancer of the lung. But life must go on. I suppose. Are you married, Mr. Miller? Oh, I lost her just over two months ago. I am sorry. Anyway, I decided I'd had enough of the smoke and sitting at home thinking. I've got no ties, so I thought, well, I might look around for somewhere. New faces, new places. Put myself out to grass, so to speak. Get a bit of fresh air. <laughs> There's plenty of that. Um, would uh, a week in advance be all right? Well, that'll be fine. You don't smoke, do you, Mr. Miller? No. And what about evening meals, or would you be going out? Oh, no, I don't think so, no. Evening meals would be very nice. You haven't tried my cooking yet. Well, it can't be any worse than mine, Mrs. Triff. <laughs> <coughs> I'll leave you in peace, then. got no cares. Leave all that to the millionaires. I've got the sun in the morning and the moon at night. Hello, Claude. Well, I've... Oh, frightened the was it? I'm afraid you're Nick, mate. Breaking, entering, malicious damage, intention to commit a crime. Oh, I do have a day off. And that's the way it looks to me. All oh, right, well, you better have a look at this, then, don't you? Yeah. Barn clearance. All right. Dear Mr. Greengrass, you are hereby instructed to clear all contents of the estate of Captain H. Braithwaite. Yeah, I'm the only silly bugger that's turned up, aren't I? Apart from you. I mean, it shouldn't have been a lad from the estate agents bringing a key, but he's 64, he's lost it somewhere. Typical, isn't it? Hour and a half I've been waiting out there. Oh, are you an apology, Claude? All right, well, you needn't bother. You can help me sort this lot out instead. Eh? Oh, I bet you've got no better to do, have you? How much are you getting for this lot, then? No. I'll oh, pull the other one. I'm not! I'm not! It's just, just getting what I can raise on it. It's a load of old junk. It's not! I mean, look at this. Do you like me to put the wind up here? <laughs> hey, I mean, people in the city you have a small fortune to hang these on the walls. Well, not an E1, they wouldn't. I think you've been lumbered, Claude. I'm not! I'll tell you, I bet, I bet, look, I mean, look at that, eh? Eh? I better get it. Oh, yeah, very good. I better get a few quid out, eh? Do, do you know how to toss a bail? I beg your pardon? Ugh. I'll show you the ways of the country, lad. Look, like this. Here we go. In there like that and just... How's that? Well, come and have a go. I think I've done me back. <laughs> Mind you, I know, I know who dropped me in it with you, you know, that maggoty face butcher, wasn't it? I'll be as trouble with his liver. Not as easy as it looks, is it? Oh, I'm back with me hands. What's this? What's what? This. I don't know. I thought it was your stay. <laughs> Come on, get it over. Right. <laughs> How it Hey, he looks, looks like Blankton's mother. What a load of rubbish. Yeah. I don't see how I'm going to get this out of here by the weekend. I shall need a tractor, a load loader, cost a fortune. I'm going to lose money on this. Yeah, not for getting my cleaning done. Oh, it's rough, isn't it? Ah, it is. Dog rough. Claude, 
How much would you take for this as it stands? Well, it's not worth anything, is it? Yeah, I mean, I mean, like it's not—it's not worth anything less than fifty quid, like, is it? I'll tell you what. I'll give you twenty-five, and I'll take it off your hands, cash. Twenty-five? Uh, oh, I think it's worth a bit more than that. I'll be doing you a favour. Twenty-five. Look at the state of it. Uh, I, I don't want any comebacks. Not from me, nor from you. And, and uh, will you guarantee it's out by the weekend? Yeah. Right. Done. Give me your hand. There. Come in. I found your front door key, Mr. Miller. But I never locked the door. Oh, it's very kind. My granddaughter. What a lovely little girl. Taken a few years ago now. It'll be roast beef and Yorkshire pudding tonight. Lovely. Hello, love. Nick, you're filthy. Where have you been? I thought you liked me like this. Get off. Oh, whatever happened to romance? Look in the laundry basket. And take those boots off. Yes, dear. Alex rang. How is he? Fine. Having a wonderful holiday. Nick, now that Alex is more or less retired, we ought to think about buying a bigger house. We've already got a house. For nothing. Yes, but there's nowhere here I can use as a surgery. And I really need to live above the job. Well, so do I. We're not going to live in a little police house for the rest of our lives, love. I'm not saying that, am I? All I'm saying is that until I get promotion, this house is part of the job. So here we are, and here we stay. You mean it's not even up for discussion? I bought a car today. What? A car. We don't need another car. We don't need another house. How much? Only 25. What kind of car can you get for that money? Oh, you'll love it, Kate, once I done her up. She's... she's a bit rough at the moment. Is she? Yeah, and there's a slight mice problem. Oh, mice? Yeah, they're nesting in the, uh, in the back. Sounds ideal. How old is she? 1936. Older than you. It hasn't been used since 1939. Like your brain. Come here. Sorry, I've got late surgery. Makes a change from tin spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> Not worth it just for one, is it? Do you see much of your family, Mr. Miller? Well, we only had um, one son, Colin. And uh, he was killed on his motorcycle uh, just after the war. <laughs> That's his daughter, Claire, in the photograph. Her mother went off with somebody else and my wife and I brought her up. It can't have been easy. Oh, we managed. You must be very close. <laughs> yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Are you sure you're all right, Mr. Miller? I could ring the doctor. She only lives just across the way. <coughs> no, I'm fine. You don't look it. And Dr. Rowan has a surgery tonight. Right, George. Hey, 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 hey. 
Yeah, right. I'll have a large scotch. Get one for yourself. You better put Malcolm one in and all. Oh, thank you very much. You're usually skin tough at weekend. I know. Well, I've had a bit of good luck, haven't I? Oh, aye. Uh, yeah. You remember that barn clearance I did at Braithwaite? Aye. Yeah, it used to be right up your street. I found this old crock of a motor car. You should have seen it. Dog rough. Got no wheels on it. The hood had disintegrated. There were mice nesting in it. I've only sold it for £25 to Constable Nicholas. <laughs> You didn't. Uh, 25 quid? For old Braithwaite's MG? Ah, uh, you'd not keep foul of it. <laughs> they didn't know Braithwaite have it laid up at the start of the war. You were mad about that car. Was it? Thank God he can't see it now. He got a couple of blokes all went from factory in Abingdon to do it. Did he? Well, I'll tell you one thing, they wasted the trip. <laughs> it's an MG TA. Is it? Ah, uh, well, not any longer it's not. It's more like an ME double S. Do you get it? <laughs> You'll be laughing at the other side of your face if you realise how much it's worth. It's a collector's item, isn't it? A car like that would be worth a lot of money put to right. A few hundred quid, even in its present state. Tell you what, it'd fetch a bomb down south. Aye. Lying, cheating little tyke. Just shows you you can't trust anybody these days. Once again. Thank you. I thought it might be the air, probably the change of altitude. Hmm. I'm down to my last inhaler. Your chest is very bad, Mr. Miller. Well, I was gassed in the First World War. I see. You do know you have to take great care, don't you? Yes. Oh, excuse me. Dr. Rowan? Hello, love. <laughs> That's very nice. Nick, I've got a patient with me at the moment. Fine. See you soon. Bye. This should see you through. It's been a pleasure to meet you, Dr. Rowan. How is the doctor? I really don't like people touching my things. I'm sorry, Mr. Miller. I was just turning down the bed. Are your ears burning, Rowan? No, Sergeant. Well, they should be. Because when I came in this morning, I expected to find Claude Greengrass under lock and key, but no. Not only is he at large, but he's accusing one of my officers, you, Rowan, of taking financial advantage. All I did was buy a car, Sergeant. A car? While in uniform? It's a heap of junk. You're a police officer. 
You're the doctor's husband. Yes, Sergeant. I don't want any of your smart London practices up here, my lad. I gave him a fair price. What you should have learned by now, Rowan, is when you dine with the devil, you sup with a very long spoon. Well, if anyone was done, I was. The force doesn't employ you to deal in second-hand motor cars during working hours, does it? No, Sergeant. Suppose he files an official complaint. Do you have any idea how much bump that entails? How much disruption to the work of this station? Not to mention your future career. Do I make myself clear? I'll have a quiet word with him, Sergeant. Yes, you do that. Mm, that smells good. It is good, Mr. Miller. I'm sorry I was a bit sharp last night. None of us are getting any younger. May I ask what your plans are for tomorrow, Mr. Miller? Tomorrow? Uh, I have no plans. Good. It's the fate. The Arbis Festival. Oh, I'm not much of a one for social occasions, Mrs. Tripp. Oh, you'll enjoy it. I shall be making hot jam tarts, so you will come. Very well. Let's make sure that tomorrow is not a repetition of last year's fiasco. Do I make myself clear? Yes, yes sir. Right. Do I make myself clear? Yes, yes Sergeant, Sergeant Blaketon. No more livestock running loose. Pandemonium ventris to be avoided. Yes, Sergeant. And Bellamy, no fraternizing with the village girls. Sarge. And if by chance Greengrass offers you the crown jewels or London bloody bridge, try not to buy them off him. Do I make myself clear? Yes, Sergeant Blayton. Right. Carry on. Day after day, alone on a hill The man with the foolish grin is keeping perfectly still But nobody wants to know him They can see that he's just a fool And he never gives an answer But the fool on the hill Sees the sun going down and the eyes in his head See the world spinning round Well on the way Head in a cloud The man of a thousand voices Talking perfectly loud But nobody ever hears him Or the sound he appears to make he never seems to notice But the fool on the hill Sees the sun going down And the eyes in his head See the world spinning round <laughs> Mr. Miller, you must come and look at the flowers just for a second, they are magnificent. Any of them from your garden? Tell what he wants to do. And he never shows his feelings, but the fool on the hill sees the sun going down. And the eyes in his head 
Mrs. Riddle, I'll be straight over. Is this going to happen every night? What? You playing with your toy car. You're talking about the other woman in my life. Yeah. Well, this one's still working. Yeah, that wasn't too sore, was it? She'll need daily injections for at least a week. I'll call in tomorrow. Any worse than you ring me straight away, Mrs. Weddle, day or night. Thank you, Doctor. Good look round the station and the old rolling stock, yes. Well, here's to the fate. You are coming tomorrow, aren't you, Mr. Miller? Oh, I'll be there, Mrs. Tripp. Cheers. Like a garage. What a wash. Might as well have the bloody thing in bed with us. When are you going to take a look at my car? Tomorrow. After the fight. All right. How was she tonight? Well, I changed the oil. I got the wheels back on. I think the spark's going to be a bit of a problem. You're telling me... say about fraternizing just put your head in there now Sad. <laughs> hello Claude oh constable now then what can I sell you you're a man as knows a bargain when he sees one aren't you 
Now let's cut all this nonsense, shall we? If you've got a complaint to make, you come and see me. You don't go shouting the odds down the pub or anywhere else, come to me. What are you talking about? Don't you? It's nice to see you doing all this for charity. Charity? Well, if you're not, you're taking money under false pretenses. And that's a very serious offence. Coppers never give up to the yard. Give us a pint, will you? Right. Oh, I'll be back in a minute. You know that job you did me with the sheep last year? Do likewise. <laughs> Well, come on then. Is that the best you can do? Oh. <laughs> You're useless. Have you ever heard of Doctor's Revenge? <laughs> Thank you very much. I feel better now. Yeah. <laughs> you have a go. Come on, girlfriend! What I told you before, you, you cannot trust coppers, can you? He's getting as bad as that devious bugger Blake to me. Afternoon, Greengrass. Oh, Miss Bladen, just talking about you. Aye, I heard you. Hope you're not driving in your state. Have you dried off, Len? Mm. Just about. I really enjoyed doing that. I know you do, Sister. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to go home now and get my bag and give him a red home injection. Okay. I suppose you're off to see her. Yeah, I thought I might get her to turn over. You'll be lucky. Mm. By the way, George, where, where, where will you be tonight? Well, I'll be at the pub later. Why, what are you up to? Oh, a bit of this, a bit of that. Might, might be having something fishy. You know? <laughs> yeah. So if I'm, if I'm knocking on the back door later on, it'll be me. Knocking. Well, it's going very well so far, Rowan. Let's uh, keep it up, shall we? I'll try to, Sam. I thought I'd like a walk, but uh, I'm just a bit too tired. Well, I'll run you up to Mrs. Tripp's. Thank you very much. In you get. How are you feeling? I found that 
Mr. Miller. Upstairs, love. Aidensville Police. No, I'm afraid she's not. Well, I'm surprised, Mrs. Reddle, that she left the fate ages ago, especially to give Amy her injection. The door on the left. Right, in you go. Alf, it's Nick. Oh, hello, Nick. You should hear what Blake had to say. Yeah, have you heard anything from Kate? I'm a bit worried. She's missed an appointment. Oh, sorry, can't help. All right, if you do hear anything, let me know. Of course. Yeah. Right on. All right, thanks. Bye. What is it? If you could tell me, talk about oh, what's always. troubling you. I love them. And her. And it's all gone, Doctor. It's all gone. I don't know you very well, but I do know... Well, who knows anybody, Doctor? I do know if something's causing you pain. Well, I told you I don't feel It's any... better to talk about it than to bottle it up. No, no, that's where, where you're wrong. <laughs> See, doctors don't know everything. No, but we do it's know It's like steam. Everything. You need to, you know, build up the pressure. Mr. Miller? Mr. Miller, supper's on the table. Mrs. Tripp also had a letter asking her to leave his clothes to Oxfam. It's like he's written his will, Sergeant. All I'm asking is why a perfectly decent, sensible, pleasant person, as you seem to be, why do something like this, Mr. Miller? It's 
Milner. Does that mean anything to you? No. So I didn't even tell you then. She was younger than you. Who? Who was Mr. M Milner? My granddaughter, Claire. We looked after her from the time she was three till she was 18. And she flew the coop as they have to. And she was living with this fellow I used to knock her about. And one night she picked up the bread knife and <laughs> stabbed him. He died. And she got ten years. We saw her every visiting day in Holloway. It really took it out of my old lady. Finally killed her. Nobody thinks of that, do they? And then last month, Claire topped herself. She would have been 22. Younger than you. Now, your husband was in the Met. And he was the one who arrested her and gave evidence against her. He said she'd said at the time she was glad she'd done it. Somebody's got to pay. Um, have you seen out of Dr. Rowan? Um, um, uh, the, the, the motors at the, uh, the railway sidings. Right, get rid of that bloody Nick, fish. Are you there? Oh, I found them down there, honestly. Mr. The car's been sighted at the railway sidings, Nick. I'm on my way. Okay. next month your granddaughter and you think well that's it no pills gas them but you know energy and then you realize you've still got this lump inside you and you've got to cut it out I got this from a little Turk. It was him or me, poor beggar. There's one or two of them, Adam. No, we had bayonets, so. I can still see him. Didn't look in pain, only uh, surprised and disappointed. Trying to hold his, um, what do you call it, intestines inside his tunic. They shouldn't lock up a girl like that for a thing like that. Well, spur of the moment. No. No, possibly not. But they did. It was going to be him. And then I met you. I saw the pair of you of the fate. And I thought, no. Let him live with nothing like I've had to. Frank. Frank. Frank, I've got a four-year-old girl seriously ill with pneumonia waiting for me. A young life at stake. You're seriously ill. You know that. I know that. 
We both know life's unfair, but does a four-year-old? I've got to go. You do what you want. No, I won't. Let it go. Let it go. Nick. Nick. No, he needs help. Please be careful. Be easy with him. Nick, I need to go to Emmy Rattles now. Please. Thanks for letting me know, Phil. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. He's in hospital. You know, he's not got long to live. Six months at the most. I was proud of you tonight. I really need this. I was really proud of you tonight. I was really scared tonight. Cheers. Nick, you were a mess. <laughs>